Good morning, Kaylin. Well, good morning. I'm Dr. Hi. Cynthia. I'm Kaylin, and this is Intuitive Hypnotherapy Podcast. Where we talk about stuff, and then we heal stuff. Yes. I mean, I feel better afterwards, so <laughs> it works for me. It works for us. A little <laughs> content out there, little awareness raising, um, a little love sharing. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little fuzzy today, did not have a great night's sleep. How about you? Um, last night was the worst night I have had in a long time. And every now and then I'll have a night that's not great. But last night, every hour, and it was every 1030, 1130, 1230, oh. like clockwork. Oh, that's like clockwork. Miserable. Yeah, it was. Was your brain hurting? Was your body hurting? What? Why were you? No, it might have. I tossed and turned a lot. Like okay. literally tossed and turned and felt like I just couldn't get comfortable. I wasn't necessarily hurting, but just, mm -hmm. you know, uncomfortable. And then I got to a point in the night where I'm just frustrated <laughs> because I'm like, well, even if I fall asleep now, it's not going to be enough. <laughs> I'm going to be so tired tomorrow. And, you know, that doesn't help anyway. No, so. it doesn't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, How yeah. about you? Anything out of I, the I norm? I try not to look at the clock because... I don't want my brain to start doing math and go, okay, if I fall asleep now, I'll get three hours sleep. And that's exactly what I do. I probably need to turn my clock off, honestly. Um, but I, I did anyway. I so I woke up at three and oftentimes I will wake up. If I wake up in the middle of the night, it'll be between three and five. Mm -hmm. And if I'm doing my horary clock, right, that is the time when the lung meridian is the most active. Hmm. If you've ever had a wicked case of bronchitis and you wake up in the middle, middle of the night with a coughing fit, yeah. usually it'll be between three and five because that's when the lung chi is moving and it's trying to heal your body. Huh. The it's lung meridian, good. my friend, also controls the emotion of grief. So sometimes we'll wake up between three and five when we're stressed or when we're processing emotions and things yes. like that. So I woke up and made the deadly error of looking at the clock and it was three <laughs> and two. Mm -hmm. But I remember the dream I was having and it was the weirdest darn thing because I was having a dream about having insomnia. <laughs> That's a nightmare, right? <laughs> uh, like, why am I so weird? <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Dreaming about not sleeping. Yep, that would be. Yeah. <laughs> that so makes me it. It's just so stupid. It's just, <laughs> and it's having a dream about having insomnia and the word. <laughs> was actually in the dream not having a dream about not being able to sleep it was oh <laughs> so I got up went to the bathroom got a big glass of water um because it's still very hot and very dry and and I have a fan on in the room and a little room air conditioner to try and make it a little more seasonal and then I decided to go back to sleep Mm -hmm. And instead of waking up at six, as I wanted to, I delayed the alarm to seven. Mm -hmm. I got to stop doing that. It's terrible. But I had this weird dream. Get a load of this. Another one? <laughs> Not insomnia yes. this time? So, <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, we all dream all the time most of us just don't remember them. And sometimes we remember them and then we forget them. That's why dream journals uh -huh. uh, are so important for, for some. I'm not dream journaling, I'm podcasting this. <laughs> Anywho, 
So back in the day, I used to go to this mega church in Denver. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, there are a couple of mega churches in Denver. <laughs> <laughs> and when I'm queen, um, they will be taxed. But <laughs> that's for mm -hmm. another podcast. Anyway, so this giant mega church, and in this dream, I was somehow living back in my mother's house, though it wasn't a house that I recognized, but it was a big old house, and I was living there, it may have been in my present time body, may have been in a- Okay, that's what I was- A gonna... younger body, like when yeah. I, because um, my little sister was also living there, okay. and for some reason, she had opened her house up to this mega church the pastor and all its congregants and i remember seeing you know some of the other pastors because they have pastors and deacons and mm -hmm. um all of this jazz and the big throne chairs on the giant stage and the 300 person <laughs> choir yeah one of those and i remember <laughs> saying that but and so they're having like this banquet or something but then the teenagers, specifically the teenage girls, were coming around the house and just going through shit. I'm like, what? Yeah. what? First of all, and I was like, Mom, why are you letting all these people in there? Uh huh. And so my younger sister just got annoyed and somehow magically took all of her stuff in her room and moved it several floors up to <laughs> away from the commotion magically uh -huh. but they were still going through my room and my stuff specifically my dresser drawers and they were taking on my sweatpants <laughs> <laughs> of anything they couldn't take like the jeans with the buttons <laughs> jewelry no <Jeans>. sweatpants <laughs> and so I didn't <laughs> And I wanted to wear a pair of sweatpants and I didn't have one. So I had to put on my older sister's sweatpants, which were too small and had a rip. And I kept <laughs> going around telling them to stop these girls from stealing my sweatpants. Look, I have <laughs> sweatpants with the rip and I just, and nobody was listening to me. And I was, and that's when I woke up. Um, okay. So I've been like biting my tongue. This is so, so weird because I, remember some dreams I have thought about dream journaling because there are some times in the morning that I'm like that was so weird was and I'll even re I'll, I'll replay it in my head a few times and then I, and then later in the day I get all excited to tell somebody about it completely blank gone it is out there on the psychic iCloud it's somewhere I, we got a on another episode we may have to I guess yes, you remember your psychic password <laughs> on, exactly I'm recovering from the iCloud because there are some that I'm like, I want to share with people, but a week, so not this past weekend, weekend before, okay. it might've even been like, I don't know, it was Labor Day weekend, but I woke up and I was like, dang, I had the weirdest dream. Mm -hmm. And we live across the street from a church. This is so weird. <laughs> it really is so weird. Okay. We live across the street from a church. And we actually bought the house from the church. The church, uh, this house used to be the parsonage. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm leaning in. It was the parsonage. Uh -huh. um, and the pastors lived here. And I think before we lived here, I think they had maybe a missionary family here. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, the church okay. owned it. Okay. But this dream, something was going over on across the street. It was almost like they were having either a yard sale or some kind of like, an open house kind of thing, but it quickly took a turn. Look, this, this means like it, it went way off the rails very quickly. Okay. All of a sudden, instead of it turning into what I thought was a yard sale, it turned into a massive amount of people that okay. it turned into like trailers and junk cars and just like a junkyard. Their parking lot all of a sudden turned into a massive junkyard or like a, um, I don't know. It's like people had tents set up, you know, like they were living there. It was weird. But all of a the sudden they started coming over to our house and almost like you described, what? they wanted in. 
and we're like, yeah, we're not letting you in. Like, we don't know who you are. No, thank you. And they said, okay, well, there's enough of us. We're going to come in. And they started coming in and taking stuff. Now, I couldn't tell you specifically what they were taking, but it was the strangest thing, especially considering what you said you dreamed about last <laughs> night, that they just came over and they're like, well, we're going to take it. They're it's just like, taking shit. it was whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, they could have been taking sweatpants. I don't know. <laughs> but it's like, whatever. The more I say it out loud and think about it, it was almost like whatever was being given away over there just wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. So they're like, all right, so we'll just come over to your house. And I think, I assume they were doing it to the, all the neighbors, but obviously mm -hmm. all I remember was them coming to our house. Cause I remember us looking out the window and being like, there's people coming over. That's so like, weird. It's super, that is super, super weird. weird. Our, yeah. Our dreams are way, way too similar. And I have no idea what, what even sparked it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I do know what, now that you mention it, because, you know, mm -hmm. I'm still cleaning out boxes and whatnot oh, and organizing. Yeah. And um, uh, what was his name? Heritage was the name of this church. And so once upon a time when I was new in practice mm -hmm. and in a much smaller visage, um, I took out a half page ad in the church's newspaper. That's how big it was. They had their own newspaper. Oh, <laughs> not, like a news, not like a newsletter front and back on a piece of, you know, oh. like newsprint, <laughs> you know, printing press in the basement, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I, <laughs> so I got out my, you know, the, the trimmer thing with the, yeah. the slicer and I put just the ad in some sheet protectors. So that may be how they got mixed up in my subconscious. Um, and then I, you know, threw the rest of the thing away because, so I'd been carrying that thing around. So it was 1994. So it was probably 1995. Wow. That's how long I'd had this newsletter. And you tossed it? Well, I kept the ad that I was in. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I was I like, I mean, at this that. point, you got to at least like, keep that part. <laughs> yeah, historical yeah, right. art. And um, um, two things that I'm coming with. So I think we should do a healing around our sleep space. For uh, you, yes. I think we definitely need to do a house healing because... Yeah. Well, there's a lot of energy around churches. And as much as I'm for oh, yeah. spiritual freedom, um, you know, we're here to raise the vibration, bring love and light. And um, some of that religious programming just doesn't fit yeah. with our unique profile. And if you had the parsonage and you had missionaries and you know, that's a lot of, of religious energy in your house. I don't yeah. I remember you telling me that, but it now it's sticking. So we'll run some gold grids and, and um, bring your home into mm -hmm. present time. And um, I might ask you to participate. Yes. At least when you're in trance in um, how... How many bedrooms does your house have? Okay. Only reason I'm thinking about this is because we don't use them as bedrooms. <laughs> so I believe there. it was listed as four. Four bedrooms? Yeah. Okay. okay. Four and, and one and a half bath. Yeah. And you got a basement? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Full basement. It's unfinished, but yeah. Okay. Full basement. Just... And I've got this coal room next to it. Yeah. And that opens up to the outside probably because that's, I don't know. I assume where they toss coal in. Excuse me. A you coal room? Coal room? Coal, yeah, like C O A L. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've never heard of such a thing? No. Me I... birds, coal rooms. Right. <laughs> yeah, some of these old houses have these coal rooms. I guess that's, I, I mean, obviously we don't use, it's the man cave now. 
How old but, is she? Yeah, it was oh. old like storage. I think it was, I think it was 40s. So not super old, but. Okay. It's a, um, yeah, yeah, it's a Sears, it's a craftsman home, a Sears craftsman home, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I know that because really cool. I watch HGTV. Yes, it is a Sears craftsman home. And one of the things Dave said when we were putting in floor upstairs, like we just put down this like um, vinyl plank wood stuff. Um, but every room is still perfectly square. They did good. <laughs> okay. It was built well. For being that old, every room is still just, yeah, right on. It's interesting. Because but, yeah, it just 40s that's there's a lot yeah 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting yeah, yeah. i We're believe i'd love to find more here. history on it yeah i think that somebody get uh, i don't know if gifted is the right word will maybe i thought that somebody like the original owners or something may have when they passed on this went to the church because so, i don't know that yeah maybe that's what it is yeah um but yeah i should do some more research on it because it is uh you know we're we, we're getting slightly off topic as we usually do but i would love to chat more about the house and energy especially because october we're gonna do our i ain't afraid of no ghost series so good and that um, would be so cool to talk about because we need to yeah. map that out because i want to make okay. sure that we have kind of a syllabus for the four weeks. Yes, yes, we do. We definitely do. Cause I get all excited thinking about it. I was like, oh, we should talk about this. <laughs> 100%. So uh, I blame the lack of sleep, okay? <laughs> well, indeed. And we did, a, we did a sleep healing a while ago. Well, I was actually yep. in Denver. Yes. And um, insomnia, okay. Everything is energy. Thoughts are energy. Our bodies are energy. Our equipment is energy. It's run mm -hmm. by energy. Dreams are energy. And energy can't be created or destroyed, but it can be converted. It can be transformed. I like to say there are no bad dreams. Okay. Because a lot of people call them bad dreams. Right. I like yeah. call them scary dreams. There can be scary dreams. There can be some actual shit that's my truth around it is that it's our subconscious mind trying to tell us something. Yeah. Now there's loads of dream journals and loads of dream interpretation books and things like that, even in acupuncture. If you dream of voyages, it has to do with the kidney meridian and you, okay. know, you might need to tonify something. <laughs> and so I firmly believe that you and I are getting information from our subconscious mind mm -hmm. or our astral body when they're up, you know, something's up to be healed. Yeah. Something's ready to be healed, revealed, expressed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, that's so weird that we basically- I know. That's what I was about to say, but what? Part. Yes, that's what I was just going to say. But what are the odds that like, you know, it, it just, yeah, it's a very similar dream. And I just had it. I had just told Dave. And I might even tell them sometimes like, man, I had the weirdest dreams last night, but that's it. Yeah. But this was one that I was like, okay, I got to tell you. And he did. He was like, yeah, that is weird. <laughs> I was like, I don't get it. It doesn't even make sense when I say it out loud. But yeah, to have yours be so. Like church people are trying yes. to get at Yes, it. trying to come in and just take stuff. And yeah, just was weird. So in my junior side chair dream analysis, I'd like to think that those individuals are seekers. Like they want some information. They want some of this revelation, these, these ideas, this higher vibration that 
this openness of psyche and soul and mind that we're mm -hmm. trying our best to share and ultimately let everybody know that they're loved because right. they're created from love. It's, you know, when we're in the sky or when we're dreaming, we're just swimming in love. Mm -hmm. We, if we attack it like that, then what are these weird dreams? What information yeah. do they have for us? So mm -hmm. we'll do a little dream interpretation. We'll do a little insomnia heal healing, you know, just clean up the sleep space again. Yeah. Um, for you specifically and listeners on this, you can replicate this. This is all active imagination, you know, guided imagery, kindergarten space, anybody can do this. We're all psychics. We're all love. We're all healers. Lean in, play around, have fun, give yourself, give your community a healing because that's what we're all built to do. With this information I'm going to share, um, Ooh, I was trying to think of a way to wrap some NLP into our sessions because there's a lot of stuff on the physical level. I don't know if it's exactly going to work for this, but we'll play around. Wow. And, um, but anyway, for the house healing stuff, yeah, this is all stuff you can just imagine you're installing or helping clean in your own space, whether it's your house or your office or your apartment or a room you rent or your car. I routinely drive with my car in a bubble and grounded to the center of the earth. Mm. I just like to think that that gives me a layer of protection. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to avoid all accidents, but maybe the accidents won't be as horrible if we're a little more mm -hmm. conscious and bubbled up. Um, anything else before we start? Oh, I don't think so. So sleep space? Yes. Which is kind of sleep space slash insomnia. Dream work. Definitely dream work, whatever that's. So I'm going to take you into trance, into hypnotic trance, mm -hmm. and you get to tell me what fucking cars and dreams and trucks and invasion of your space. <laughs> we'll just play because your subconscious knows your subconscious isn't pulling any tricks on you. Your subconscious knows all the answers. Your subconscious is always there to protect you, always there to tell you the truth. Um, your subconscious mind is often going to be the quiet one. It's it, the, your subconscious mind is sometimes kind of what we're talking about. Like what, <laughs> you know, like right. read, read that back to me. <laughs> what <just> right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard to believe what your subconscious is telling you. And again, part of this work is to help all of us learn to trust our intuition, trust our subconscious. Yes. To all of our tools. So we get to play. And by we, I mean you. <laughs> Deal. So for our listening audience, this is the time when you are not driving, you're not operating heavy machinery. Just be focused on this. Just give yourself this time to give yourself your space, your dream, a little healing. And um, fun fact, you can even direct your dreams. <laughs> You can tell your subconscious mind where you want to play instead of, as Netflix does these days, surprise me. <laughs> does do that. Have you seen that? Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it'll ask what profile we want to go into because we've got one set up for Laura. And you can say, surprise me. Yep. 
<laughs> and I think that's how we uh, very often operate. Just, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. So in this, I'll, I'll show you how you can actually direct your dream space. Fun? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Since you're so good at this already, go ahead and find yourself in your seat and close your eyes. If you need a little ocular fatigue exercise, pick a spot. Spot on the floor works great. Something immobile. And just let that grab your attention, hold your attention. And look at that spot. And as you hold your attention on that spot, congratulate yourself for your ability to focus and hold focus. And allow yourself to look at that spot and allow your eyelids to get heavy. When you hold your gaze for a period of time, it's normal for your eyelids to get heavy and just let them close on down. And as your eyes close, allow that comfort, that relaxation of having closed eyes to sweep through your body. Waves of relaxation. Just let it flow on down. Take a big deep breath. Let it out. And with every inhale and exhale, you go deeper and deeper into relaxation. Just allowing your eyelids to become heavy. And with every breath, it allows your body to become heavy. And as your body becomes heavy, it allows your muscles to relax and soften, allowing your whole body to relax. Relax in that chair. Relax on down. Down, down, deeper down. And with every breath, and with every number I count, you'll go deeper and deeper into relaxation. Your muscles will get heavier. They will soften. You'll sink effortlessly and comfortably into the chair where you're sitting. It'll be so comfortable and so heavy that you want to wiggle or shift in your chair, go ahead and try it. You find that it just doesn't work. And as you try to shift in your chair, it allows you to go deeper and deeper into relaxation, deeper and deeper into comfort, deeper and deeper into that comfortable, soothing, supportive, playful state of being. As we count backwards from 10, nine, softening, slowing your breathing, getting more comfortable, eight, seven, deeper down, deeper down, six, Five, four, so comfortable, soft, relaxed, heavy, supportive, comfortable. Three, two, and one, all the way down. Down, 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 deeper, deeper, deeper into this safe place, this comfortable place, your subconscious mind, your resource state. 
a place that has all your gifts, all your treasures, all your knowingness. Deeper down, deeper down, deeper down. Now in this quiet, relaxed place, in your mind's eye, in your own imagination, imagine that you're in a theater and you're in a big comfy chair that's comfortable and reclines. And you're sitting looking at this giant movie screen. But in this theater, you have a remote control. You get to control what's on that screen, what you see. And first things first, just look at that screen and give it a cleaning. Dust it off, wipe it off, hose it down, clear it of any energies that are not yours that are not in present time. So look at that theater screen in front of you. And when you turn it on, you'll see a, a picture of yourself, yourself in present time with what you're wearing at this very moment. See yourself there. See yourself waving back at yourself. There you go. That's perfect. And in this space where you look at yourself on the movie screen, send that version of you, that hologram, that movie star that has your exact name. Give that person a healing whatever he or she needs, some rest, some recovery, some support, some validation, or just to be seen. Say hello to yourself. Hello, Cynthia, hi. And sometimes that right there it's just the healing that you need. So spend a moment in that healing as you're looking at yourself on that movie screen. And then the next moment, see yourself on the movie screen in your own bedroom. See yourself on your bed. You can be sitting, you can be laying down. And see yourself on your bed. And in your mind's eye, look around the room in whatever state it is. And see how you feel sitting in your own room. Are you comfortable? Are you sleepy? Do you want to rest? Do you want to move about? Do you want to get out of there? So in that room, as you're on the bed, in your mind's eye, Imagine a gold grid. Yes, lines going up and lines going across. And imagine a gold grid on every wall. And again, you cannot do this wrong. And we use gold because gold has the highest vibration of all the colors. 
But when you put a gold grid in the walls of a room or a home or an office, it acts like a psychic bug zapper and helps without looking at it, it helps you rid the room of any energies that are not yours or you're ready to let go of. And it offers a layer of protection. So in your imagination, see yourself in your bedroom, on your bed, and put a gold grid on every wall in your bedroom. Kaylin, how many walls do you have in your bedroom? Four. Okay. Are you able to see a gold grid floor to ceiling on all the walls? Yes. Okay. Is it easy? Mm -hmm. Perfect. You're doing it just right. Now, because I'm thorough, I like to run gold on the floor, corner to corner. Make sure you get any closets or foyers or cutouts or bay windows. Get all the space, all the surface area. Cover that with a gold grid. And no, it doesn't matter how big the squares are. Whatever makes sense in your universe. Kaylin, do you have the gold grid on all the corners of your floor? I do. Perfect. And last, as you can imagine, we're gonna run gold grid along the ceiling. Now is your ceiling in your bedroom, is it flat or is it pitched? Does it have a vault of any kind? Flat. Okay. And as you're running the gold grid, some people notice that they see things like energy moving or colors um, or mist, or sometimes people even hear stuff like wind blowing, or sometimes they say they hear like an electrical sound. Are you noticing anything as you put the gold grid in your bedroom, Kaylin? First impression. Mm. A window. What's happening with the window? just a big loud window <laughs> okay go ahead and run that gold grid over the window that's part of the wall and how do you feel as you see yourself sitting in your bedroom sitting or lying on your on your bed what do you notice? What do you feel? So the grid on the floor, mm -hmm. if I've got something on the floor, or I've got clothes or something like that, it doesn't, mm -hmm. like little speed bumps, you know, it's not nice and hmm. flat. Okay. Hmm. What do you think the speed bumps mean? Mm -hmm. It bothers me. <laughs> okay. Well, you're in control. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do with those speed bumps? Mm -hmm. Flatten them out. Okay. You have the seniority. You have the power. You have the remote control in your hand. You are in charge. Go ahead and flatten them out. And if they don't, what are they telling you? First impressions. Mm. Just I need to get rid of them. <laughs> okay. And sometimes um, that's it. 
Yeah, I just I just need to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and do that. And when it is complete, mm -hmm. let me know. Okay. Awesome. So you're in your bedroom. And you've just installed gold grid on all the walls, the ceiling and the floor. So the intention of the gold grid is it's starting to clear out old energies. Energies that aren't yours. Previous owner, previous renter, the builders, people that have visited. And what's cool about using a gold grid is you can just set your intention that it's clearing the space, and it does. And to evolve this for a full house healing, a simple way to do it is to run gold grids through all the rooms, floors, ceilings, attics and basements. And you can do it with your intention and you can just intend that magically those gold grids are going up and the healing has started in this very instance. So as you're sitting in this theater seat, watching yourself on the movie screen, and you've just given yourself a healing, and you're sitting on the bed, and you've just healed your space. What I'd like you to do is see yourself laying down in your bed. You can be on top of the covers. And let me know when you're there. Okay. So in this space, watching yourself on the movie screen, you've just given yourself a healing and you've just healed your space. You are safe grounded and protected. And if at any time you don't feel safe, grounded or protected, you have the divine right to open your eyes and come out. You're always in control, you're always in charge. In the next moment, as you're watching this on the screen, I'd like you to imagine a big old thought bubble hanging out in the space above you, above the bed. And in this thought bubble, to the degree that you can, see the dream you had from a week ago. You're in this deep, relaxed space. You're watching it as if you're watching it on a computer or on a the theater screen. You're safe, grounded, and protected. You're watching it in the second person. Imagine that thought bubble. And to the degree you can, start seeing your dream, the dream we were just speaking about. Okay, Kaylin, do you have your thought bubble? I do. And are you able to see your dream or, or even parts of your dream? Maybe it's snapshots. I can.
And as you look at the dream, what's the first impression that you see? What's the first image that comes to your mind? First impression. It is chaos. The chaos. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, it's outside of your body. Mm -hmm. You're in a safe place. And when you look at yourself and you look with your subconscious mind, what does that chaos represent for you? First impression. It's just a lot going on. A lot going on. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So take a look at that chaos and recognize that in your own space, in your own body, in your own bubble, you have a lot going on. Is there any other meaning or message in there for you? There's almost no more room over there. No, no more room. room all the chaos. Okay. Maybe your to-do list is full. Does that ring true for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Subconscious is always there to tell you the truth. And it's mm -hmm. always there to protect you. So as you look at your dream in the thought bubble, what's the next image that you see? The chaos going on across the street. Okay. People are starting to come across toward our house. Okay. It's like a, a crowd of people. Maybe not a crowd, like maybe 10 people or so, but more than just a couple people mm -hmm. are coming over. Okay. And it's like they're coming over because they want something, but they don't, they're not. There's nothing specific they're asking for. Okay. And we're not going to let them in because we don't know them, but they're going to force their way in. Mm -hmm. So if you, get to, if you get to retell this movie, you could stand out there in the front yard and you could stop these individuals and you could ask them, what do you want? Why are you here? And what do they say in response? First impression. I don't know. Okay. They won't, they won't. It's just they want what we've got, but they won't. It's nothing specific. It's nothing. And ask them if it was specific, if you did know what you wanted, what would it look like? What would it sound like? First impression. It's like physical possessions. It's something I... Yeah, they just okay. want something. They want some physical possessions. Okay. Yeah, just things that, but without any plan, any nothing specific. Nothing specific. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like they just they just don't have enough, so they just want to take some more. Okay. And if you ask them, so you've got 10 people there, men, mm -hmm. women, children, what's the makeup? Mm. Men, women, no children, all adults. Okay. Equal five and five or? Yeah. Okay. Five, five and five. And is one of them a spokesperson for the group or a leader? It does seem like there's one leader. Okay. Male or female? Um, male. Okay. And if you ask 
that gentleman, I'm like, why are you here? What do you want? What do you need? And why do you think this is where you're going to get it? It's like they just think it's that. Again, it's nothing specific, but it's just they deserve something. They deserve something. Yeah. Okay. That's a concrete like it's quality. Because, it's, because they can. Yeah. Because they can. And so sit with that for a moment and see if you can draw anything out from this gentleman. And remember, you're safe, you're protected, you're grounded. Are you getting any other response? No, it's almost like they just want to look and see. Okay. That they don't have, but there's nothing that they want specifically. Okay. But when they so, see it, they want it. <laughs> okay. When they see it, they know. So, so since you look for what they want. Since you're the director mm -hmm. of this movie, do you want to let them in? Do you want to let them walk around? No. Do you want more information from them? Mm. They're not allowed in. Okay. So all of these actors, players represent part of you, part of your subconscious mind. So what do you think this gentleman represents? First impression. I don't know, maybe it's too chaotic over there. There's not enough over there. Okay. Looking for more. And is the, does the number 10 have any significance for you? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Okay. What about the equal numbers of men to women? Does that have any significance for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in your mind's eye, in this safe place, as you're standing outside of your home, not allowing the chaos from across the street from the church to come into your physical space. First of all, give yourself credit for being able to rewrite this script, for being able to go into your subconscious mind and take a look, get some answers, get some information. And what you can do now is you can send these individuals away, these specks of information, because that's really what they are. And just like in Marvel's Endgame, you can see them just fade away like sand or dust. You can allow your thought bubble to just go clear from the stream. And you can set your intention that if there's more information 
that you need, that it will come to you in a form and fashion that makes sense to you, that's safe for you, and maybe is fun for you. What would be a fun representative or messenger in your universe? If someone was going to share you a deep spiritual message and make it fun, what would it look like in your universe? Mm -hmm. First impression. Animals. Animals. Any specific animal or just all of them? Mm. <laughs> uh, a lot of animals, but pigs specifically. Love it. Okay. Piglets. Piglets. Mm. Baby pigs. Like babe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can set your intention that instead of a scary dream or weird dream, that if your subconscious mind has information for you that you're ready to receive in this moment, right here, right now, in this safe place, you can tell your subconscious mind, you can tell your astral body that whatever information is going to come through for you, it will be in the form of cute, adorable piglets. And it'll be clear and um, easily available. It'll be amusing. It'll be fun. It'll be light. And so as the director of your own script, of your own story, put those instructions in your thought bubble with the images of the piglets. So when you go to sleep tonight, not only will it be quiet and peaceful with no insomnia, you're setting your intention that when you dream, you're gonna dream and your messengers will be adorable piglets. And if you're really lucky, you'll remember your dream. Sometimes you'll just have the dream and not remember it, but your intention is clear. And when you're ready, go ahead and clean off that theater screen. Let that impression, let that movie of you in your bedroom with the gold grid, having given yourself a healing, having gotten the information from your dream, having re-edited how you will get information in your future dreams, go ahead and let that disappear off your reading screen and out to the universe. And when you're ready, go ahead and take that remote control, click it at the movie screen and let it turn off. And just be there, quiet, and appreciate the work that you just did, your very own dream interpretation, soul work, you can affirmatively tell your friends that you did your shadow work for the day. Box checked. And when you're ready, not just yet, we're gonna bring you back into perfect awareness where you're gonna feel light, energetic, healed, and absolutely focused on what you need to do. No chaos, just order. One, two, start coming back into the room, back into your body, wiggling your fingers and toes, 
two, three, feeling good in your physical body, feeling lighter, healed, four, five, ready to make some shit happen, ready to make some organization out of chaos, six, seven, feeling healthy, alive, eight, nine, 10, open your eyes, wake up, hello. That was like perfect timing. <laughs> I was looking. <laughs> it was, well, it was, <laughs> I was just laughing to myself because I'm like, well, if people don't know if they did not know. Now they know I'm a crazy animal person. Well, yes, I think we I know. Love, I love animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I but love this animals. This is a way to take scary dreams and make them informational and how to intend. And if you did this for a few seconds, a few minutes before you actually fall asleep tonight mm -hmm. and reaffirm, okay, I'm ready for this information. And if you're not, when you are ready, it'll show up. Right. You right. Think you could say not tonight. <laughs> like, nope. I just want recipes or <laughs> okay. yeah, I just want, I intend to just have body level healing, <laughs> whatever, you know, or I'm going to find my winning lottery numbers. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> so you gave your house a healing. You gave your sleep space a healing. You interpreted yes. your own dream. You gave yourself a healing, did your shadow work. Whew. Days. Yeah done i don't know how you're gonna label <laughs> this sesh <laughs> i don't know either <laughs> oh well thank you thank you very everybody. much i'm kaylin i'm dr cynthia this is intuitive hypnotherapy podcast where we talked about some stuff I think a lot talked. of stuff <laughs> like Thanks, guys. bye